we've got to lead. Uh, we can't just keep doing what we're always doing because silicon is reaching a wall. He said, so let's, let's do the next step. What's going to happen after silicon? We've got to think of something different. We're working with things that aren't commercially available. We're making like a spectrometer for about $100. 3D printing using glass and at the nanometer scale. The equivalent, if you blew it up to the size of my pinky, my pinky would be about 50 foot long. So that Harry Potter's cloak of invisibility will be possible. Uh, I'm engineering teaching lab coordinator. And so I uh, operate the ECE 444 clean room as well as the ECE uh, nanofabrication laboratory. So we've got a 3,000 square foot uh, class 5, 6 clean room for instructional purposes. Nobody's doing that. We got our industry partners on board with this intel, loved it, donated equipment, and then I had to figure out what to do. For example, nanosphere lithography. To be able to reproduce these really small dimensions, doing it the traditional way is incredibly expensive. You know, you're looking at millions of dollars. We can do it for a couple dollars. We can do the same thing with little balls of plastic. Everybody has one of these uh, tools that allows you to put metal onto the surface of the wafer. So, and it will actually extrude out little tiny nanowires. Uh, you're looking at systems that are going to be five million to fifteen million dollars. Most research facilities would love to have them, whereas our students, undergraduate students, get seat time. Even by the end of the semester, they can walk up to it, turn it on, load up their sample, and then start imaging or milling. Then we also have access to technologies that nobody else does because we know what we need, but we don't have anything available to let us do that. So we make that ourselves. For example, these nanospheres that we're ordering. You know, it does take a little bit of skill and practice to get really good ones, but one of my undergraduate students built a system that does it automatically for you. You just press go and it does everything. So he had that all set up in the hood. You know, this is crazy pie in the sky. And that's what I tell my students, just think of the craziest thing you can do and we'll try it. 99.5% of the time it's worked so far. We have researchers in there, but the researchers are actually doing real research with the understanding of whatever they discover gets taught to our students in real time. So when we discover something that afternoon, we're teaching it. So this is very valuable intellectual property. These technologies that we're developing could be worth potentially billions of dollars. So we have one product that's already, we've got a company started. The goal of that is once that is profitable, a portion of those profits are going to go back to the students. So it, it's a magical lab. It, we've got the right environment, the right people, the right expertise and we've got over 50 years of experience doing similar things and the students are coming out of here and they're going to start creating that first generation of mass-produced nanotechnology because that's the Illinois way. We come up with our own way of doing it and it works great.